Hello and welcome everybody. This is Grandmaster Sam Shankland and uh, today I'll be doing my fifth and final video on the series of uh, playing with Bishop against the Knight or Knight against the Bishop or uh, anything like that. So in a lot of the previous videos we've seen some cases where one minor piece was better than the other. Uh, but here what we're going to see is a case where the minor pieces are in my opinion of about equal merit and a strong player is able to uh, leverage his specific minor piece to his advantage. So this is a game between Magnus Carlsen and Nikola Jukic from the Tromso Chess Olympiad two years ago. There's obviously a big mismatch in rating, as Carlsen was rated 28.77 at the time against 25.21 from Jukic, but still, I found this game to be very instructive. So before we can really get into the meat of what's going on, we should just uh, talk about some basic positional ideas here. So right now, white clearly has bishop against a knight. This bishop is on... A nice open diagonal, it's uh, pointing towards this pawn on b7, it's defending the king, it's in all rights a very strong fan bishop. But at the same time, if you could imagine black playing b6 and a5, it's going to be very hard for white to find targets for that bishop. Similarly, this knight on f3 is not great because it's kind of in the way. Black's knights are not wildly impressive right now, they're superfluous, meaning they're both kind of competing for the same squares. But... Ultimately, if these knights can find good squares in the center, they're going to be pretty happy. So black went knight f8 here, which doesn't uh, seem very, very difficult to see the idea. Black would like to play knight d6 and knight d4 to occupy this really nice outposted square in the center. As we've seen many times before, an outposted knight with good targets to attack is generally better than a bishop. Now, while the uh, d4 square is under control for now, we've already ascertained that white would like to move the uh, knight on f3 and... Uh, if he moves it away, then knight d4 could be a problem. For instance, if white were to play something foolish like knight h2, just to activate the bishop, after knight e6, I would almost prefer black's position because I think after knight d4, this knight will be the best minor piece on the board. So in that regard, I very much like Carlson's move, which is knight to h4. He would like to bring the knight to this f5 square where it could cause some difficulties for black, and black doesn't actually have a way to stop it because of g6, uh, which would seem strong because it restricts the knight, Unfortunately, this fails concretely to queen takes f6. So Jukic played uh, in a very natural way, in my opinion. He chose knight g6. And he could have tried knight e6, but after knight f5, the knight's pretty is going to have a very hard time reaching d4. And in the meantime, this knight on f5, it doesn't do that much, but it's really annoying. Black can't get rid of it, and uh, I think slowly but surely white will improve his position. His next move will probably be b4 to undermine the queen side, and we'll see him do something quite similar in the game. So black played knight g6, and uh, white played knight f5, which makes a lot of sense, and black played knight e7. Clearly black is wanting to exchange off these knights, uh, but Carlson wants no piece of it, and simply retreats with knight e3. And here black played b6. And this is another good place to stop and think about what's going on. Black now has taken one of his key queenside pawns off of the light squares, which makes it much harder to attack. It seems like White's lacking active prospects. The bishop on g2 is nice, but it's sort of shooting into thin air. There's not really much on this diagonal for it to do, even though it's a very long and open one. And uh, it seems like Black's position is void of weaknesses. White can't really advance his knight to f5 or d5 because Black's knights are controlling those squares. White has trouble bringing this rook on a1 into the game because, for instance, uh, if you were to play something like rook d2, to try to double up with rook d1, black will get there first by playing rook takes d2, queen takes d2, rook d8, and black has successfully taken the open file. It seems like black has an entirely acceptable position, but Carlson's next move really starts to put, turn the screws. So I'd like you guys to pause your videos and see if you can figure out what the world champion played. Alright, so if you want more time, please keep your videos paused. Magnus chose b4, which is a very strong move. White is trying to undermine the defense on the queen side, and particularly he'd like to open up the b-file, because after something like bc5, bc5, rook a, b1, this rook on a1, which we were previously complaining about, all of a sudden finds a happy home and can actually become useful. So, after b4, black tried knight c6, and here white found another really strong move. So I'll give you guys a moment to see if you can find it. Okay, so Carlson put, took a somewhat surprising decision, but he exchanged these rooks on d8, and then we see the follow-up. Rook to b1. Now, this is a, a funny move. It looks like you're, you're just putting the rook on a passive square. But actually, White has some ideas here. 
he can play b takes c5, followed by queen b6, and if black really does nothing, say h5, white can even consider the move b5, point being that after takes, takes, both this knight and the pawn on b6 are hanging, and once white wins the pawn on b6, this a pawn becomes a monster, and note that the bishop will control the key square the rook needs to get in front of it. So, unsurprisingly, after rook b1, black felt the need to do something. Now, when I was watching this game, uh, I was actually watching it online. I played this tournament, the Olympiad, uh, and I had a pretty good result there, actually. But um, I was uh, sitting out this round. This was the only game out of 11 where I didn't play. It was uh, round three. And here, I was expecting black to play knight d4 to, like we've said before, put this knight on a nice outposted square. But what we're going to see is that an outposted knight in the center is only as good as the targets it can find. And here, after b takes c5, Black must recapture with the pawn because if queen takes c5, queen takes b6, wins a pawn, queen a3 does not work because the rook on d8 is hanging, so uh, black must play bc5. This knight on d4, all of its potential squares that it would like to go to or control serve no purpose under, under white's control. It cannot go to f5, f3, e2, c2, or b3. All of these squares are well controlled, so actually this knight on d4 more than anything else, is simply blocking the rook on d8 from becoming active, because the d file is black's open file, while the b file is white's. And say the ad nice advanced queen b7, we're seeing this highlighted. The rook on d8 is not very useful, while white is quickly ready to run in. The pawn on a6 is now weak, and if black were to play queen b6 to try to defend it after queen d6, rook b6, the pawn will be lost. And if black takes here, takes... This knight on d4 really just isn't that impressive, and white's ready to come up with moves like rook b6 or rook a7 or rook c7 to target these weakened pawns on the queen side, and he can also consider something like knight d5 to simply put the bishop on d5. So, Jukic did not want to allow the b file to be open, so he played c takes b4. But here we're seeing exactly what Carlson wanted. By playing rook b1, which seems silly, I mean, now what have you done? Rook a1 to b1 from one passive square to another. In fact, you might even want the rook on a1 now because it attacks the a6 pawn. But what he has done is he has imbalanced the pawn structure. And one of the first things I said in the first video about bishop versus knight is that the bishop will feel very comfortable in an imbalanced pawn structure because it can control both sides of the boards at once. Here, if white were to play a move like c5 and make a passed pawn, while these passed pawns are not that far apart, uh, generally speaking, I would still prefer a bishop to a knight to try to assist them to go through. Black played knight e5. Presumably he was looking for counterplay against the c4 pawn. But this is a good moment to speak about this knight on e5. It's on a nice centralized square, but it's actually just undefended. It doesn't have a way to be anchored, and as a result, it's just going to get attacked and become vulnerable. So white played queen c3, a very strong move, and this is aiming to uh, advance c5 and create a passed pawn. So, for instance, if black were to do nothing, h5 here, I really believe Carlson would have played c5 and tried to blow the position up. For instance, after something like b takes c5, b takes c5, the threat of rook b7 probably compels rook b8, but after takes, takes, and c6, white's pass pawn is very strong on c6, and in particular this knight on e5 once again. Where's it going to go? All of its important squares that it would like to go to to advance are covered. It can't even come back to try to blockade the pawn. It has nothing to hold it in place, so it's got to be worried about a move like f4 coming. It looks like a nice centralized knight, but really it's quite a passive piece. So after queen c3, black invaded with rook d3, and he might have thought this was some kind of achievement because it forces the queen away. But actually after queen a1, we're noticing that this rook on d3 is misplaced. Black would like to play knight takes c4 here, but he can't because after takes, takes, bishop f1, white will win this rook on d3. There are other ways to win the game, I think, but this one is the cleanest. And this pawn on a6 is now loose, and black can do absolutely nothing about it. He would love to play a move like queen c8, just be simple, defend the pawn. But the problem is, like we're seeing, this knight on e5 is just needing of support, and it doesn't have a pawn to actually do it. So while the knight is centralized, it's not outposted. Here, it's just hanging, and that's a result of uh, the queen being tied down to the defense of the knight. As such, this pawn on a6 can't be saved. You could try moving it. But hereafter, e takes a5, b takes a5, white invades with rook b7, and that should be that. He's really winning every which way here. The only ways the queen can defend the knight are queen c5, which is met by rook b5 winning the knight, or queen d6. And I would imagine there are plenty of winning moves here. Probably c5, knight f5, these moves should be good enough. But I, like for simplicity's sake, queen takes a5, simply remaining upon a head, and c5 is on the way, and black is utterly cooked. 
Jukic tried h5, and his point with this move is to play h4, and uh, this is just a key point in general. When you're playing against a bishop with a knight, you want to push pawns onto the same color as your opponent's bishop to weaken the other complex. We saw that in the previous game with Fatochnik, where he had pawns on g6 and f5, and this was allowing a lot of weaknesses on the dark squares. Here, Jukic is trying to achieve the same thing by playing h4 and poking weaknesses of his own. Still, Carlson goes pawn grabbing, queen takes a6, h4, g4, rook d2. And now there's no doubt this looks quite dangerous for now. Right now, white is up a pawn, but that pawn on the queen side doesn't seem wildly effective, it can't advance without being lost, and black is ready for moves like knight d3, queen f4, and he's starting to attack on the dark squares, and particularly looking at the loosened white king side and trying to get to the white monarch. However, Carlson has other ideas, and he found a very strong move here. So I'd like everyone to please pause their videos and see if they can figure out what white played. Okay, so if you want more time, please keep your videos paused. The power of this bishop will not only defending the white king, but also supporting past pawns, and in that regard, white just needs to make one, and Carlson played a very strong move. c5, giving back his extra pawn, but after b takes c5, b5, we're seeing that this bishop, in addition to defending everything, is ready to help the white pawn advance to b6 and then b7, which basically should queen the pawn. So black looks for direct counterplay. With knight ed7, he wants to get the queen into f4. And of course, white has no interest in allowing black to blockade his pawn on b6. Then he would have a very hard time pushing it further. So he plays b6 right now. Of course, black cannot take this pawn because the knight will be loose. So he tried queen f4. And again, this looks impressive. I mean, the attack is a little bit worrisome. But uh, after queen a8 check, king h7, and queen f3, we're seeing once again the point of this bishop. It let the queen on a6 come all the way back to f3 with a gain of tempo and threaten a queen exchange. And here black is just in big trouble. There's nothing he can really do. With the queen on f3, white will never be checkmated, and white is ready to play b7. So black tried exchanging. And now if you look at these knights, they're superfluous and problematic. Really, black would like to get both of those knights to the d7 square to stop the pawn from queening, but uh, they're not going to do that. So black tried rook d4. His goal is to play rook b4, which will uh, contest this b-file, hopefully make a pass pawn of black's own on b4 that can be at least a little bit annoying and uh, remove some of the support of this pawn. But of course, Carlson has no interest in letting this happen, so he plays b7, making sure to keep this pawn on a square where uh, it's defended so that after rook b4, he can simply move away with rook d1. Rook takes b4, c takes b4, would be much less clear. Here after rook d1, the threat of g5 is uh, leaving black in a really bad spot. This would win a piece. And there's not any great ways to deal with it because if black plays g5 himself, white has a strong move knight d5, and now uh, black cannot take the pawn on b7 because knight takes f6 check will win the rook. So we'd have to go with knight takes d5, and after bishop takes d5, the knight on d7 is once again a problem. White's ready to play something, just move the bishop back, say bishop g2, and then once that knight moves away, the rook will come in to d8, and that will queen the pawn. If you th just imagine if this knight on d7 could suddenly turn into a bishop on f4, black would have a much better time defending, because that bishop could uh, support the c-pawn as well as stop the b-pawn on b8, and it's well anchored. That would uh, be a much better minor piece for black to have here, but unfortunately for him, he just doesn't have it. He also can't even play c4 now, because after bishop e4 check, the knight is lost immediately. And after something like knight f6, bishop f3, that black knight can't go anywhere. It would love to just turn into a bishop on e5, but as is, rook d8 is coming, and white is just winning. So instead of g5, black tried knight e5, gaining tempo. But now this pawn on b7 is just one step away from queening, and all white has to do is get rook d8 in. Of course, he can't do it yet. If rook d8, this would be bad. He's ignoring black's threat. Knight takes f3 check, and now black will take the pawn on b7 and probably win the game. But bishop g2. And it's very hard for black to actually do anything about this pawn because rook d8 is coming. He tried knight fd7, but after one more very strong move, knight c2, this rook on b4 is overworked because it would love to stay in the b file, but it can't because, for instance, if rook b6, white will play f4, and now these knights are uh, superfluous and getting attacked, and one of them will be lost. So black had to stay on the fourth rank and tried rook f4, but after rook d5, white is threatening rook takes e5. Once again, these knights proving utterly helpless. f6, and now another strong move, rook takes c5, and it's all over. This whole time, if you can imagine, that knight on e5 being a bishop 
black would have had a much better time here. Here, because white was able to open the position and create an imbalanced pawn structure, his bishop reigns supreme. So uh, it's hard to play as well as the world champion, but hopefully uh, you learned something from this game. I know I certainly did. Thanks very much. This is Sam Shanklin. Please have a good day.